Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here and Apple today released a surprise security update, Mac OS Sequoia 15.6.1. In this video, we're going to go over what's included in the update and whether you should install it on your Mac. Plus, we're going to do a walkthrough on installing it on our Intel and our Apple Silicon device. And we're going to do a sneak preview of OpenCore Legacy Patcher 2.4.0 on our unsupported Macs. Let's jump in and get started. Now, Apple was working on updates for Mac OS Sequoia 15.7 and we've seen the multiple beta releases but last week Apple released 18.6.1 for the blood oxygen fix on Apple Watch 9 and 10 and for iPhone. If we take a look at the full release list along with 15.6.1 we got Sonoma 14.7.8 and look who's back from the dead Ventura 13.7.8. Now Ventura was dead Apple wasn't even making Safari updates for it anymore. So we had thought it was gone, but it came back. We also got iOS 18.6.2, iPad OS 18.6.2, and iPad OS for devices that can install 18, 17.7.10. And all the releases remain the same on the previous release list. For our demonstration update here today, we've got our M1 MacBook Air 2020. Now we talked about Apple intelligence and software updates last time to see if they were enabled after installing the updates so we're going to toggle this off we're not going to forget about that this time and we're also going to go into the software update and make sure that our automatic updates are off we are have download install and install app updates when the apps are off now that's important for our open core legacy patch devices that you do not want these updates automatically and downloading until you are ready to go so we're going to turn those off to make sure that they're not turned on most of you in the comments have said that this doesn't turn on but we're going to double check and make sure now if you look here we've got 1.56 gigabytes on the update size and that's coming from 15.6 so that's going to be the smallest update size for apple silicon devices and we're going to click on update now and agree and we'll type in our password and we'll start to download. We're also gonna test out our Intel Mac Mini from 2018 T2. This is one of the oldest compatible Macs available. Hop on over there and we'll log in. We'll get that update started. We're using screen sharing. A lot of you ask, what are you using to control these Macs? I have them all on my local network, wired in through ethernet, or through Wi-Fi. You can see your all connections, previous connections, you can hold on network and you can see all the devices that are connected to the same network. So let's log in here and check the update size and get this kicked off for our T2 Mac Mini. Now the T2 Mac Mini, as I said, is the oldest, but it's still a very good device. The prices for these guys are super low right now. Now I get it, if you want to get a desktop, it's hard not to get the M1 Mac Mini due to those prices are so low. The T2 Mac Mini is still a great device. You can install Boot Camp on it. It's still a good, solid device, and it's very affordable if you want to get into a desktop Mac. So we've got 15.6 installed here. We have our automatic updates off here, and we'll make sure that we can see the update here. And we're downloading pretty quickly here, and we're going to keep track of how long it takes to install these updates. So T2 Mac Mini, look how small the update is, 6.78, but sometimes it has to download the recovery OS version. So we'll see if that gets bigger when we start to update. But again, we're going from 15.6, so it's gonna be the smallest update on Intel. So let's click on update now. We do not need the password for Intel devices. It'll automatically start to update and we do not need to be an administrator. So we'll wait for this to download and we'll see what the actual download size is. And a lot of times it changes. We'll give it a second here. And it has not changed. So the recovery OS has not been updated, 6.7.2, and that's a tip off on whether recovery is updated to the latest version. So I wanted to make a quick note on how long the preparing is showing and how long it takes. We know by looking at the previous updates that the preparing does not take 30 minutes. As you can see here with through multiple updates, the most it took for the past four updates was nine minutes preparing time. What I have noticed in Mac OS Tahoe is this has changed. It doesn't just give you a generic 30 minutes. I've seen it say anywhere between five, 10 and 15 minutes. So hopefully Apple will be able to get that sorted out by the time Mac OS Tahoe comes up because again, this doesn't take 30 minutes. We know that and that's why I keep track of the time that it takes. Now let's go over the tip of the video. If you know these tips, let me know in the comments. If you've got a tip that you wanna see, let me know in the comments too. If you want to know a small way to navigate through folders quickly with the keyboard, 
you can use the command key to go in and out of the folder. So you can see we're in the users test movies TV media folder. So if we want to go into there, we can go down to go into the media, automatically add to TV all the way to the end. If you want to go all the way back to test, all you need to do is hold down command again and press up and go all the way back through the folder system. The second tip that I want to show, we talked about how to move the different icons up here with the command. If you want to move the search bar, all you need to do is click on it for three seconds and then you can actually move it around. And when you're done, you can let it go and every time it'll open up from there. If you want it to go back to the same way again, open it up again, hold it down for three seconds, put it right back in the middle and command space to turn it off. Even though this is a security update, Apple released the full installer to be able to build a USB or reinstall from recovery or do any troubleshooting for 15.6.1. And if you have an Apple Silicon device to be able to restore your Mac with Apple Configurator 2, they released a IPSW restore file. Okay, we are back up after the update and for 15.6.1 on our Apple Silicon M1 MacBook Air, it only took 10 minutes five minutes to prepare and five minutes to do the actual install. And that's one of the quickest updates since 15.4.1. If we look at our Intel Mac mini, we can see that we are still installing. And this is the end part of the macOS update that the Apple Silicon devices do not have to do anymore. And I can tell that because I have full network and I can remote into it and the desktop, but it's finishing its final tasks. And that's the difference between those two install processes, but it's still going pretty quickly. Okay, we're back up after the update for our T2 Mac Mini. Let's take a look at how long it took to install. Four minutes on the preparing and 14 minutes on the install after the reboot for a total of 18 minutes. And that's still quicker than the last four updates. And you can see why there's a difference with the smaller security updates compared to the larger feature releases. What is the build version of 15.6.1? I used SW underscore verge to get the build version and the build version is 24G90. I go over that because sometimes there's beta releases and you wanna make sure that you're on the public release build version, but there was no beta updates for 15.6.1, so you don't have to worry about that. One of the things we wanted to check to see was whether the automatic updates and the Apple Intelligence were turned back on up to, after the update. One thing that we did not see is sometimes you get a splash screen telling you that the automatic updates or, or Surrey has been turned back on. We did not see any splash screens for this update. So if we go into Apple Intelligence, we see that it has not been toggled on. So that's good. And if we go into general, we go into software update, we can check and we see that none of these has been turned on. And that's good. I do not want to see those turned on after I went in there and I turned those off. So that's good. Now we will check to see if Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs do the same thing because I saw some inconsistencies there. So we'll check that later. Let's talk about the Apple Silicon firmware and the Intel firmware updates. And I'll tell you why this is important and why I go over this in just a second. Apple Silicon was not updated and the bootloader was also not updated. The T2 Bridge OS update was not updated. It's the same version of 15.6 and the same with the T2 firmware on the board itself. Now, why do I talk about the firmware updates? Well, it's boring as heck, but it's boring until you have a problem and you might need to do something about it. And I'll show you that I have two Apple Silicon M1 devices. I have my M1 MacBook Air and we have our 13 inch MacBook Pro. When we look at these, I wanna show you the difference here. When we have our MacBook Air, all of it's seen ever is macOS Sequoia. So the system firmware and the OS loader are the same and that's normal for being on the latest operating system version. But when we go over to our 13 inch MacBook Air that has seen macOS Tahoe as a different partition with the operating system, it installs the latest version of the firmware. So you can see that there's a mismatch here. The OS lower version is macOS Sequoia, but the system firmware version is 13, which is macOS Tahoe. Why is that a big deal? Well, if you're having problems and you installed beta, but you installed with the USB flash drive, for example, or you installed it on a secondary partition, you still have the macOS Tahoe beta firmware on there. And wonder if there's a problem with it. Wonder if Apple will fix something later. Well, you're stuck on that until you update to macOS Tahoe public release, and then you'll be on the public release version. Or if you use DFU and Apple Configurator 2 with the IPSW to restore the entire system, then you'll be in line. If you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments below. Now for Safari, 
it was not updated. And we go over this because we can tell if there's any fixes for security or bug fixes in Safari if the update version has changed. Now this follows a pretty good path. If you look back here, it's been updated through most of the updates, except when it comes to small point releases like 15.4 to 15.41, we are on the same version, it did not change. So there was no changes to Safari in the 15.61 update. And remember, we go over this because they all create a picture. Apple does not give us the information so we have to go looking for clues if safari was updated we know there might be additional things that apple put in the security update that they did not say in the patch notes all right so after all that what's in this update well here we are again this update provides important bug fixes and security updates and is recommended for all users we have to break down what we see here it's not just security updates and again that's why we went over the safari piece because wait a minute there's actually bug fixes within the operating system that aren't listed anywhere so that's why we're trying to get these clues we see that it wasn't in firmware wasn't in bridge os wasn't in safari so it must be in other parts of the system when we talk about security updates apple does provide really good security update notes for the updates. So let's take a look at that. Update. So if we scroll down here, we could click on Neko Sequoia and we can zoom down here and we can take a closer look. There's one fix. Impact. Processing a malicious image file may result in memory corruption. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals. Description, an out of bounds right issue was addressed with improved bounds tracking. Here's the CVE number and look who it's from. Apple reported this. We wanna look at the security and see if it's important enough. We gotta think about that. Apple is going to release a 15.7 update and they're working on that now. There's uh, the three betas already. If it was not important, they would have probably just rolled it into 15.7 and coming out within two to three weeks. It was important enough to release this update right now. Now, are you or me a specific targeted individual? Yeah, probably not, but we don't know. Are, is your company have someone important like this, like a CEO that might be? Then maybe, so that's important to think about when we are talking about these security updates. We also know this is a zero day. That means that it was already out there in the open before Apple was able to patch it, and that's why it's important and that's why it was released now. Let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores. Again, we go over this just to make sure that there's nothing kind of crazy about the update that could cause major performance issues. Most of the time it's the same, but that's why we're checking. For 15.6 on this MacBook Air, we had a 2396 and an 8825 for a multi-score, and on 15.6.1, a 2400 and an 8805, so pretty much on track. For our T2 Mac Mini, we had a 1574 and a 6729 on 15.6 and on 15.6.1, a 1581 and a 6730 on the multi-score. Now let's take a look at a preview of Open Core Legacy Patcher 2.4.0 for unsupported Macs and whether it's important enough to install this update. The testing, and we, and we have a couple things that we need to talk about that are really important. One of the things is, is that 15.7 has an issue right now. And one of the issues is, is that there is no KDK or kernel debug kit for 15.6. And Apple has not released a kernel debug kit for 15.7 beta or Mac OS Tahoe 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. This is a problem for the KDK devices, most of the ones that need an AMD graphics suite. We need the KDK. There is a built-in protection in Open Core Legacy Patcher to not install a KDK that is two versions behind. So for example, for 15.7, if there's no 15.7 and there's no 15.6, it will not install the 15.5 KDK to protect the system because there's no way of knowing for sure whether the 15.6 includes all the things needed to be able to be compatible with 15.7. But we lucked out here because Open Car Legacy Patcher looks at 15.6 as a minor. So 15.6.1 is still compatible with the 15.5 KDK. So we really lucked out here and we don't need to do anything right now. This is a big warning. Don't install 15.7, especially if you have a kernel debug kit Mac. And I put the list of those machines down below in the description. So where do you see the kernel debug kit status? I always put the status right here on my main article. So you can click on this 
link here. It'll bring you to the release pages and show you all the latest kernel debug kit. And as you can see, only 15.5 and Tahoe Beta 1. Now for the Metal Lib Support Package Max, that is ready to go. And remember what I said is that there, the server will check to see if there's a new update every, I think, four to five hours, I think, uh, Makola mentioned to me. So this was already built in, oh, two hours ago. The update was set to go at 12 noon. So that must have been around a six hour mark when that was created on the server and made it available. So this guy is ready to go for any Mac that needs the middle lib support package. So that's good. And that is not dependent on Apple releasing anything. I recently took over a moderation of the Open Core Legacy patch subreddit to be able to hopefully we can rebuild this provide a lot of information I made this post about all of the problems with the 15.7 update and not having any KDKs and what you can do especially if you updated to 15.7 accidentally because the way that it looked in open core legacy patcher it seems like it is a proper public build a couple of the commenters were a little bit quick to jump on people's backs but when we look in here create mac os installer and then click download mac installer look what we see here as the latest available version of mac os sequoia 15.7 and that's because the patcher uses the developer release catalog to be able to pull the updates and then parses through them. Apple changed the way they list the 15.7 update so the patcher thinks that this is the latest version. So what you need to do is go in here and show older beta versions and then you will see the 15.6.1 or the 15.6 update in here. That code can be revised and I talked to Dana K about that and he is already looking at that. So hopefully that will be fixed in a future release. But that is a very important thing to keep in mind when you're building the installer. And Apple can change anything. That's my point. If you want to be sure, just check my page and you'll see the latest release of Mac OS Sequoia or Sonoma or Ventura before you make that jump. So let's do a quick preview of some unsupported Macs. We've got our MacBook Pro 15 inch 2017 MacBook Pro with the touch bar and touch ID. I've got the log here that shows what the patcher is doing. And you can see that it was checking to see if there was a match for the 15.6 point update and there was no direct match found and it fell back to the closest match which is 15.5 and it was able to install the 15.5 kdk so everything is a-ok -okay on that so we are good to go the touch id works there's no problems on this system it's working very well and it is one of the fastest macs you can get for mac os sequoia and open core legacy patcher now let's take a look at our 2013 mac pro is doing very well with no issues this is our main machine that we do all our demonstration testing on and it's very, working very well with the latest version of 2.4.0. I also made a post about the set of updates 15.6.1, Sonoma 14.7.8, and Ventura 13.7.8. If you want to be able to put your experience installing any of these updates, you can go to this thread that I pinned at the top of the Open Core Legacy Patcher subreddit. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you're installing on if you had any issues and keep an eye out for my detailed video for Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs and testing the entire fleet. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.